Hello again, lovelies, and welcome back to another review from Through the Eyes of NG, where we're trying to look at 101 films within 365 days to raise money for We Are With You and the Shawbury Village Players. Now, We Are With You is a confidential service for young people and families affected by drugs and alcohol in Shropshire. Their work includes information, support and advice about drugs and alcohol, one-to-one -one support, group work, a parent carer helpline, help to make decisions about lifestyle, links to other services, early intervention and harm reduction. Now, as always, if you've known me for any length of time, then you're probably aware of the Shawbury Village Players. The Shawbury Village Players are a community theatre group that operate out of, unsurprisingly, Shawbury. We do a bit of pantomime, we do a bit of Shakespeare, we do a bit of murder mysteries, and we're actually doing radio plays at the moment just to keep us busy. Now, if you have struggled with your mental health in the past, like I have, then you might appreciate as well as I do what a injustice it would be to lose a community group like the Shawbury Village Players and how a knock-on effect it would have on the community and us members who rely on it. So dig deep in your pockets, find us a few quid. We're 89% of the way there now. Nominate a film or two or three. We've still got about 29 films we need. Some I'll love, some I'll hate, some I will have seen before, and it's not as good as I remember. So, today we're looking, courtesy of Gregor, at The Usual Suspects. Released in 1995, directed by Brian Singer, written by Christopher McQuarrie, starring Stephen Baldwin as McManus, Gabriel Bryan as Keaton, Benicio Del Toro as Fenster, Kevin Pollock as Hockney and Pete Postlethwaite as Kobayashi. Storyline wise, a sole survivor tells of the twisty events leading up to a horrific gun battle on a boat, which began when five criminals met at a seemingly random police lineup. Right, let's get the obvious out of the way first. So I'm not going to discuss in detail the infamous plot twist at the end of The Usual Suspects in this review. Nor will I be digging into any spoilers whatsoever for the film to the best of my ability. Now, to be honest, you could argue that just giving a synopsis for the film is giving away some spoilers. And Hollywood Film Trade has been doing a great job of spoiling films for us for years now. If anyone remembers the trailer for Terminator Genesis, which ruined one of the major plot twists of the film, like Terminator Salvation did it. Actually, thinking about it, pretty much all the Terminator films have actually given away major plot twists, haven't they? Anyway, if you haven't watched The Usual Suspects, then the best way of watching it is to go in without any information beyond it's, you know, it's a good film with good actors and a good, great script. Don't listen to anything else I say. Go and watch it. Because going into The Usual Suspects with no information whatsoever is the best way of watching it. So go forth, enjoy. Go on, off you trot. I'm going to stop for a few seconds to let you go. They're gone? Good. Because we need to talk about the fact that The Usual Suspects might not be as good as you remember. Now, it's a fine film, sure. The actors are all on point. The writing is spot on. To be honest, probably the best thing about the film is Christopher McQuarrie's script. And even if not all of the story links together logically, and yes, I'm aware that's probably on purpose, but it doesn't help the frustrations you might feel when you're watching the film for the first time. However, the story is definitely convoluted at times, and I found myself thinking again of June, and complications being added for complications' sake, rather than to enhance the story that the film is trying to tell. However, we do need to acknowledge the fact that I've watched The Usual Suspects quite a few times now, and perhaps that has rubbed away some of the pristine sheen that we all saw on the film when we first saw it without knowing about the various twists and turns that the film takes. Now, what's really interesting to me, watching The Usual Suspects again, was looking at the film uh, and acknowledging that the script is really on point. The editing by John Ottman is really good, and the cinematography by Newton Siegel adds a lot to the film. However, 
these aspects, along with the cast carrying the films and really subtle acting beats, are what stand out about the film. Whereas the direction of the film by Brian Singer really doesn't stand out and is quite boring, flat. And just like when I saw Cats in the cinema, making me want to reevaluate my feelings about the works of Andrew Lloyd Webber. When I was watching The Usual Suspects, I found myself thinking back to Brian Singer's catalogue of films and found myself realising that quite a lot of them are quite boringly directed with almost infamously poor action sequences until we hit towards the end of the run with The Days of Future Past, which is still a pretty poor film. Some of the action sequences are a little more inventive, but they're inventive because of excess use of slow motion with the Quicksilver sequences, which are the sequences that are highlighted as being an improvement on Singer's ability to direct action. And I still think they're overrated. Perhaps we'll get to that when someone asks me to do an X-Men film. Hint, hint. Anyway, where was I? You can't praise Singer for coming up with that cracker of a final twist, which, admit it, you didn't see coming when you first watched it, because it was Christopher McQuarrie's script that came up with that. And you can't really credit him with the that great scene when Kaiser Soze's lawyer Kobayashi first appears to meet the group, because that's carried on the cinematography framing Possethwaite's shadow being in the room while they're talking but also on the strength of the actors riffing on that cracking script. And on a by note, Pete Postlethwaite, great actor, love him, but he's chilling in this film, and it might actually be my favourite after Dragonheart, but before people come for me uh, with their pitchforks. Let's remember that Dragonheart's great. Don't lie, Dragonheart's great. Speaking of Kaiser Soze, the film really does shift gears completely about halfway through, becoming less about a group of criminals working together and more about the mystery of who Kaiser Soze is, which was something the advertising for the film really ran with. Marketing materials were very much focused on who is Kaiser Soze, rather than the interplay between these characters. And the more I thought about this particular plotline, watching the film, the more I found myself thinking of the film as some kind of elaborate pre-Christopher Nolan style magic trick, when we might have been better off just having a story about these really well written and well acted characters. And there's also the possibility that we need to think, consider at least, that there isn't enough of a mystery wrapped up in the story to warrant the build up and the reputation of the grand reveal at the end of the film and certainly the build-up to that within the final 10 minutes. Now, we receive only a little bit of information on Kaiser Soze, and this might be the one weakness of that brilliant script. And the Kaiser Soze is built up as this mystical figure whose reputation makes criminals shit themselves, but we never really see the working of his, their operation, and quite what, beyond murdering his own family, to show well, the film quotes as show these these men how determined he really was or something along those lines and then he wipes out friends and families who the friends and families of those who attacked his family and then he just vanishes he becomes a boogeyman with some unlimited knowledge and resources holding an obsession with remaining invisible and anonymous now if we compare that to perhaps uh john wick uh where we are shown why everyone is scared of this character, combined with some excellent build-up and very little actual exposition, we, we are shown, we are not told. And this isn't a problem which is unique to the usual suspects, but mostly we're just told that characters need to be afraid of Kaiser Soze without really giving us any reason to be scared of him or to understand where this fear comes from. I think that this review is probably coming a lot across a lot more negatively than I would have liked. Because I'm sure if I was watching The Usual Suspects for the first time, 
then I would probably have had, had my mind blown. But this isn't the first time I've watched The Usual Suspects. I've watched it probably up with a dozen times. And I think this time, looking at the film with a more critical eye than I have done in the past, and knowing that I was going to be doing this this week, and yes, reminds me, this review is late. It was supposed to run Wednesday. Uh, but unfortunately, I wasn't very well. I thought I actually had the Rona. So, obviously, this got knocked back a bit because you didn't particularly want to hear me gargling this out in what little of a voice I had left. Anyway, this time, when I was watching The Usual Suspects, I was looking a lot more co closely at the magic trick. Whereas the first time, I kept looking at the face and missed what the hand was doing. And this time, I think the magic may have been lost a bit. This isn't to detract from the fact that there are brilliant performances and a brilliant script and it looks great, the directing's really boring and the action's not great, but Brian Singer. And it's, it's fine. I just wonder if after all these years, because let's not forget this film is over 20, 25 years old now, that it's garnered a reputation for being a film with a great plot twist. And, you know, fair play, the plot twist is, in, is, is a good one and it's well presented by the actors involved in that particular sequence. But I wonder if The Usual Suspects rides on the reputation of the ending rather than some of the other strengths that are held in the film, like a fantastic performance by Gabriel Bryan who is just top-notch in this film. He plays the character really well. Equally, everyone in the film pulls their weight. They're, everyone, every character is unique. You don't really have faceless goons within the main cast. No one fits in that role. Everybody has a role to play. And as a crime thriller, yeah, it's, it's, it's solid. But I just wonder if it holds a much greater reputation than it should. So that's the usual suspects. A bit of a, I, I've been kind of treading delicately with this one because I was conscious of running into spoiler territory, uh, particularly around the ending. Um, so I was very much trying to keep this one shorter and looking at the clock now, I can see I'm nearly at 13 minutes. So. Yeah, that didn't work, did it? So, a bit of a reserved review for this one, but I have already typed up and will shortly be recording the next review. And I've got a feeling I'm going to have to wash the blood off my hands after this one because I am tackling Spider-Man 3. After Spider-Man 3, once again, I've been pulling reviews out outside of the actual recording just so I can spend my Saturdays whilst we're still in lockdown, banging my way through as many films as we can, so I can get them typed up and recorded quicker. So, if we're doing Spider-Man 3 next, just to give you a hint of what's coming up, after Spider-Man 3, we're going to be doing Ballerina, which I watched yesterday, and then we're doing Death to Smoochie, which I caught up with yesterday, and then after that, we've got Spawn which I haven't watched since I was a teenager, and I uh, might have to break the sober rule for that one. And then after that, we'll these films just keep on coming. So subscribe to the video, share it around, tell, tell your friends, ask them to throw me a few quid. Two minor admin points. Firstly, I want to thank Luke for giving me a shout out through his channel, Skir Skirmish Miniature Gaming. I'll put a link in the description. Do check Luke's channel out. I've got to swing for it a little bit since he, I've been on the channel a couple of times playing Malifaux. Give it a good watch. And please consider throwing us a few quid. Get a few more films on. Whoever anonymously asked me to do Starship Troopers, thank you for the donation. But I've already got Starship Troopers on the list. So if you're happy for me to do that as part of the list, great. But if you want to nominate something else, just let me know who you are, rather than just being anonymous. 
Okay, thank you again for watching. We'll see you again in a few days for Spider-Man 3. Thanks for watching.